Hello, beautiful sentient beings. It is I, Christina, here at Fit and Bendy. And today we're going to talk a little bit about the spine and the way that it's designed and how you can think of best optimizing the different parts of the spine if you're interested in spinal mobility, back bending and forward bending. Let's get started. There are three different segments of the spine. The lower part of the spine, the lumbar spine, is a natural backbender. It's also a very unsupported part of the spine. There is nothing but muscle holding that part of your spine together. So it's supposed to be extremely mobile, especially going backwards. It's also very good at twisting and side bending. The upper part of our back, the thoracic spine that goes from the mid back to to the base of the neck is a lot less mobile and it's much better going forward. So you can see that it naturally has a little bit of a forward curve. It's pretty good at twisting, not so much at side bending, and it's got all these ribs and the, the shoulder blades around it. So it's generally just less mobile. And the challenge with this upper part of the spine is to make sure that it doesn't get too hunchy and that it's still working for us when we try to go into our back bends. And then there's the cervical spine, the neck. And this, like the lower part of the spine, is only supported by muscle. There isn't a lot of other stuff and it's holding up our big, heavy noggin of a head. So very important to be aware of what's going on with these delicate little muscles in our neck and the delicate little bones that they support and be very aware of not crunching or overtaxing the neck in our flexibility. And what this means that is if you're working on forward bending and one of the fa my favorite forward bends is just to stand and bring my body forward, it's going to be easy to do it with that upper back, which naturally bends forward. And so we want to work on focusing instead on getting as much forward bend as possible from the lower back. And I always like to start my back bends with the part of my back that I know is gonna have the hardest time with it. So if I'm gonna go forward, I am starting with a tuck in the pelvis and a lengthening through the lower back to get the most out of my lower back before I start to round in my upper back. Because if I start with the upper back, it's very easy to just skip the lower back which isn't as enthusiastic. Let's look at back bends in a cobra and see how we can use these different segments of the spine to make sure we do a safe, even back bend. So one of the common problems with Cobra is if I don't really think about what's going on in my back and I just press up, the easiest parts of my back to get to bend are my lower back, which is crunching, and then my neck, which is also crunching. And you can see that this is a cobra, but I'm not bending in my upper back at all. I just have a couple spots in my back that are kind of folding. And if I persist in doing that, then both my neck and my lower back are gonna end up with a lot of stress and they're gonna be unhappy. So I like to start my cobra by getting my upper back to bend. And we do this by feeling the muscles in the upper back. I'm bringing my shoulder blades down and my chest forward. And that immediately is going to lengthen my upper back and convince it to go in the other direction than what it's used to doing. Now, if I start by getting that upper back extension and then I go into my lower back, keeping those muscles in my upper back going, all of a sudden I have a much more even curve and my lower back feels a lot less compressed. And then when I drop my head back, I also am able to get much more length out of my neck instead of being in this crunched position. So to recap, what I want in my Cobra is not to just push up and be relaxed and be hanging off of my arms because then I'm gonna end up with all neck and lower back. What I want instead is to use those upper back muscles to get my upper back to switch directions and go into a back bend. Then I use my lower back and my neck and I get a much more even and comfortable and safe and healthy curve for my back. So very important to be aware of where your back bends, where it is comfortable, and to make sure that all the different parts of the spine are being used for either a backward or forward bend, but especially for those back bends where things can get a little crunchy. All right, everybody, thanks so much for watching. We have a whole bunch of backbend videos, so check them out if you want some more workouts to start to figure out how to mobilize that upper back, how to stretch out that lower back, and get the spine moving in all the different directions that it is capable of. Thank you so much, and happy bendings.